What's happening? This your man, Chris Watts. You already know what we got to do off top, baby. You know, we got to give God the glory. You know, I got to recognize my beautiful queen, Ellie Watts, and my three beautiful girls, Antoinette, Annalise, and Alexia. So let's get to your prophetic word for today. I want to start off talking about Moses. You know who Moses was. You know the story about Moses. The Bible says that Moses was on the backside of the desert, tending to the flock, and Moses began to see something he ain't never seen before. Moses began to see a bush that was burning. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Now, you know about the burning bush. And God began to speak to Moses out of the burning bush, out of a place that wasn't familiar, out of a place that Moses wasn't used to. And for some of you, for some of you, the reason you are not clearly hearing from God, you are not clearly walking to your destiny, is because you're not in a position to be able to discern when God is speaking to you from the difference. Who am I talking to? But for a lot of you, you have to understand that your next level and your next dimension is going to come out of the next difference. You got to be willing to embrace the unknown. You got to be willing to accept the fact that sometimes God will speak to you and call you out of a place that's unfamiliar, out of a place that's different, out of a place that's not going according to the norm, that's not going going according to tradition but you gotta be willing to accept that and that's just for free that's not even your prophetic word somebody say i'm ready for the difference you gotta be willing to hear god from a place that's different if god if everybody is traveling left god might be speaking from a place of that's going right and you gotta be able to discern and have the boldness to follow the voice the next dimension sometimes come out of the next difference. And that ain't even your prophetic word. But God was speaking to Moses. And you know God called Moses to be the deliverer for the children of Israel to uh, lead them out of Egypt into the promised land. But before Moses fully surrendered to that plan of destiny, he gave God excuse after excuse after excuse. When God first called Moses, Moses said, God, who am I going to tell them that sent me? God said, you tell them that I am, that I am. That's who sent you. Then Moses said, God, they're not going to believe me. They're not going to believe that the Lord appeared to me. And God began to do several manifestations right before Moses' eyes. See, for some of you, God has shown you signs and manifestations, and you still give excuse after excuse. But, but, but God performed several manifestations. Stations right before Moses' eyes. Moses had a rod. God said, throw the rod on the ground. The rod turned into a snake. Moses picked it up, then it turned back into a rod. Then God told Moses, take your hand. Put it inside your bosom. When he pulled it back out, it was leprous. Then Moses put it back in his bosom, pulled it back out. It was made just like normal again. God performed several manifestations for Moses. So Moses didn't have no excuse about that. Then Moses tried to give God one more excuse before God got a little angry with him. Moses said, God, I am not eloquent. I am slow of speech. Stutter. And God got a little mad with Moses. And he told Moses, I will let Aaron be thy mouth. But one way or another, you're going to walk in this. You're going to walk this destiny out. And for some of you, what am I trying to say? This is your prophetic word for the day. Eternity does not accept excuses. Who? Am I talking to right now? Eternity does not accept excuses. And for a lot of you, a lot of you, you are going to allow your uh, deficiency to hinder you from walking into your destiny. Who am I talking to right now? For a lot of you, the enemy does not have to set up a plan of attack to come against you to hinder you from walking to your destiny. He's just going to sit back and allow you to self-destruct because he knows that you place more emphasis on your uh, deficiency more than you do your destiny. He knows that you place more emphasis on what's abnormal about you more than your anointing. He knows that you're going to look at your image in the natural versus looking at who you created to be in the spirit. Some of you, so for, for some of you men, oh, I don't want to get before the people because I talk like this and my voice squeak. Get past it. For some of you ladies, oh, I got a little weight on me and I don't like how I look. Get past it. For some of you, your eyes might be going that way. You missing the arm and you're missing the leg. Your ear might be on your forehead, but it does not matter. God says you got a destiny to walk out. Eternity does not accept excuses. And a lot of you, you are self-destructing because you are allowing your deficiency to hinder you from walking into your destiny. And the enemy don't even got to come against you. He know you're going to come against yourself. I almost ran around this church. But look what God told Moses. 
God said, despite the fact that you are not eloquent, despite the fact that you got slow speech, despite the fact that you have a deficiency, God says, I'm going to wrap your deficiency inside of your destiny. God says, I'm going to wrap your deficiency inside of my anointing. I'm going to wrap your deficiency inside of my power. Do you understand? When Moses began to work the ten plagues and the ten miracles, and when Moses began to divide the sea, when nobody caring about Moses' slower speech. They was only caring about seeing the demonstration of the spirit and of power. What am I telling you? When you begin to accept your destiny, when you begin to allow God to wrap your deficiency inside his plan. When you allow God to wrap your deficiency inside his glory and his power, it don't matter what you got going on with you, baby. When people see the power flowing through you, your deficiency is going to be insufficient. Who am I talking to? Because people flock to glory. People flock to the demonstration of power. And that is what is needed in this time that we're in. People don't care if you don't have no legs, no arms. People don't care if you are overweight. People don't care if you got your ear on your forehead. People don't care, ladies, if your edges is running all the way backwards. Meaning if your hairline is receding to your neck. People don't care. If you get that mic and you got power flowing through you, if you healing the sick, you raising the dead, you dropping revelation, you speaking the gospel in a way that's changing the lives of people, they don't care about your deficiency. All they see is the glory of God. Now, they might mention your deficiency. <laughs> Man, I don't know who that dude was with no legs, but boy, he laid hands on somebody and they fly out. I don't know who that lady was who didn't have no edges, but when she spoke and began to prophesy, everybody fell on the floor because they experienced the presence of God. And I just want to encourage you today. Don't allow your deficiency to hinder you from walking in your destiny. God will wrap what you think is wrong about you into what is right about him. Who am I talking to? God will cover your deficiency with his anointing. To the point where people won't even be worrying about what you got going on and your deficiency and how you look and how you talk and, and how your body is. And and and, 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 and and for some of you, let me even say, some, say, say this for some of you. Some of you, you are a part of your deficiency. You might not have a bodily deficiency, but you got a confidence deficiency. You got a, you got a life deficiency. Life deficiency meaning that you are ashamed of your past and how you used to live. And you're scared people are going to bring up your past when you try to go forth in your destiny. But you have to understand that your past can be used as a way of God's power. You have to understand that the display of your past, God will use it as a display of power. Because I'm reminded of what Revelation says. For we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony and your past can be used as a testimony that the God you serve is the one true living God. Don't even be ashamed of your past. God will wrap your past in his anointing and the glory. So much so to where when you begin to speak about what God has done for you, he'll begin to move throughout the room and the atmosphere and begin to cause people to weep, cause people to fall before him. Cause people to get healed, set free, and delivered. So don't even be ashamed of your past. No matter what deficiency you may have, you may lack confidence. You may have fear. No matter what it is, don't allow that to hinder you from walking in your destiny. God will wrap that thing and be with you just as he was with Moses. Don't self-destruct because you're allowing your deficiency to hinder you from walking in your destiny. Eternity. Does not accept excuses. You got too much greatness within you, and your destiny is too great for you to abort. Simply because you don't like what's abnormal about you. I hope you was blessed by this prophetic word for the day. Eternity does not accept excuses. This is your man, Chris Watts. You know, we say this isn't the beginning, this is forever. Together is now never. Dream big, work hard, and live easy. Peace.